at the things that, that are part of the project, inside the project. But we can also look at a risk register on the other page here. Things that are outside of your project. Things that are not part of your plan, but they may occur. For example, increasing labor costs, environmental risks, uh, reworks, you, 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 you plan on doing all the installations here, etc. But if something doesn't pass the quality assurance uh, uh, test or you know, something is not properly conducted, you have to rework on it and then there's a cost to that. Commissioning problems, material specification. These are the risks that for this project were assessed during a qualitative process. Uh, there might be a heat map associated with them. And for each risk, uh, for each risk, it was assessed there's a frequency or a probability that the risk occurs or not, and a severity if it does occur. Here the probabilities are quite high because I, 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 I have an example, I have to make the numbers pop up on screen. But usually we're talking about things that have a low probability of occurrence, okay, and a high severity. Of course, if something has 90% chance of occurring, well, that's probably one line of my project. Because if something has 90% chances of happening, I will have to deal with that, right? There might be a 10% chance of saving money of a negative cost here, for example. But most of the things we have on the, the risk register are small probability, high impact uh, events, okay? And how do we model that, those? Instead of a simple three point estimate distribution, something like that, we now use discrete distributions. We use discrete distributions and, and we do have a, a, a library here of discrete distributions to use. Okay, so there's a number of discrete distributions available. And what we do with them, for example, here I'm using the Bernoulli distribution to assign a 25% likelihood. Okay, 25% likelihood of this risk occurring. Why is it not working? We'll do it here. So binomial one and probability 0 0.25. So I'm assigning a probability of 25% of a risk happening or not, which means there's a column of 25% on top of zero, means the event happens, true, yes, one happens, or 75% chances here, 75% in one column of zero, no, false, event does not happen. That's how we're going to model events. It can either happen or not. It's a binary thing. If your risk is more complicated, we have discrete distributions and we have ways to map that too. And then when you do that, you are uh, calculating whether the risks happen or not during the simulation. And then the impact can be calculated as a number around zero or one multiplied by your severity. If you do that for every risk you have, during the simulation, you'll see situations where, for example, only one risk happened and then you had an 80% uh, 80,000 dollars cost there or another risk happened or many of them happened this is quite rare because the probabilities are small but it's possible or none of them maybe there's a none of them here none of them happened or many of them or one or two so all these scenarios are likely uh, are equally possible okay and what we do in the simulation is now we like to evaluate with, with the simulation here, the distribution of these results. This is an extra cost that my project might incur and it has to be included on my on my budget, on my contingency plan, right? So from this distribution here, let me just pick the graph a little bit, we see that there's a chance, to the other one is better, there's a chance that we will see no cost at all. So there's a 32% chance that no risk will occur. There's a chance that this risk will cost less than 100,000. There's a 70% chance that it will cost 100 or less, which is good. There is a 90% chance that it will cost 195 or less. There's even a 1% chance it will cost more than 475, almost six, seven hundred thousand. <laughs> they might add a lot to your costs, but <laughs> the likelihood of these extreme costs is very small, okay? Most of the time you'll be around an extra cost of 100, maybe 150, maybe 50, less than 200, okay? 
So we can now map these external risks, these events that may occur or not. They are of a different nature, okay? So we are talking about events. They're not part of your plan. They're not part of what you're doing, but they may occur. If you're, if you're modeling a production curve or a, a, a sales of your product, you might be talking about uh, supply chain disruptions, or you might be talking about some kind of, of bankruptcy of your retailer, and then you, you, you're not sell anymore for a while. Risk events like that, that are rare, but they have a huge impact on your, on your uh, profitability, on your uh, project, okay? And then what we can do, we can now, of course, add this extra cost. I'm adding it here, plain Excel, right? I'm adding that output from the other page, F11. I'm just adding that to my model. So here F11 is the output of my, my uh, risk matrix, just the sum of all the costs, usually zero, but it might be something else during the simulation, right? So I'm adding that extra cost here. And now I have a distribution that accounts for all the risks plus the external risks. And now we can map how these two distributions behave. So I have in one cell the distribution for the original project, okay, without the risk register, and on another cell, and I'm gonna paint it on another color, I'm gonna overlap them here. On another cell, I can overlap the cost with the risk register. And as we can see here, hopefully you can see too, the red distribution, let me tweak this graph a little bit so we can see this better. So curves, the second one will be a line. So the first distribution in red is the one I believed first without the external risk events. And now in blue, I have a new distribution where the minimum is more or less the same but the right tail is way further to the right. Those risk events, they might add extra cost. They are unlikely, of course, but they might add a lot, a lot of extra cost to my uh, uh, project. Now I can evaluate, again, my contingency, if you want, at around, actually, let me run this again. My contingency will be, by including these external factors at about, I think I changed something here in the numbers. This was supposed to be 200, okay. You just run again to get the initial set of values so you can discuss. The original contingency was about 10%, but when I include the risk register, these other risks I perceive as possible, right? Undesired but possible. I could be including opportunities too, by the way. The risk profile that the contingency jumps from seven, so from 10 to 17. So almost doubles because of these extra risks that come from outside. And those are all risks that maybe I can mitigate. So now again, if I come here and think about mitigation strategies, ways to reduce the probability or ways to reduce the frequency, I will impact my contingency back there on the first page of the project. Okay, so we can easily map those things that come from qualitative risk analysis into a risk matrix and quantify that as a contingency, as an impact on your MPV or whatever there is. Those risks from the risk measure, they will show up on your final distribution's tail, okay? They will increase the tail of this distribution, usually in a dramatic way, as you can see in this example, okay? So, <clears throat> There's a number of other things we could explore here, for example, from the initial uh, distribution we have, from the cost structure we have, if I want to rank what are the most important risks to mitigate them. Earlier we saw that, you know, by tweaking the installation fixed cost, we could lower the, the, the contingency a lot. But is that the best risk to attack? Is that the best way to proceed? We have a number of tornado charts and a number of, of sensitivity uh, uh, charts to help us understand where the risk is coming from. And it seems, yes, installation fix is the top dog of the pack here. It's the alpha risk of the whole thing.